Oh, why hello everyone. Again, this is Ethan Shapiro, the climate change realtor with Coldwell Banker, founder and manager of the most innovative real estate sales company in the world, here for Principles, episode 14. And as you might remember from last week with all of my three views that I got, we are at big point number four, which is understand that people are wired very differently. Now I'm trying to kind of create a coherent message and it's even hard for me to, to create my own message because my wiring is changing every single week. Let me try and look at you guys. My wiring is changing every single week. I'm trying to figure out who I am and what message I want to put out. So, and everyone's trying to do that differently. Some people are trying to put in a message and, and control themselves. I guess I got, I'm doing, trying to do that as well. But, um, everyone's different, everyone thinks differently, and we can help each other with our blind spots as we've talked about throughout this entire uh, show. So, point four, point one. Understand the power that comes from knowing how you and others are wired. Right. So understand that if you, if you, if you think that everyone sees the world the same way as you, um, you're just going to be proved wrong. Or you're going to be frustrated. Be like, how could that person think that way? Because they're, um, everyone thinks differently. Everyone comes from a different background. That could be in America. And people in, I, I have people in my hometown who thinks, shout out John Spizzy. Like, I'm, I love that guy. I miss that guy. He started off as like my worst enemy because of some like drama we had in fourth grade. He, he thinks about the world, sees the world a completely different way than me. But once I like got over the whole like drama thing and how he got me suspended from school, which we can talk about another time. But, um, I end up loving the guy. Like I, I love that he thinks so differently from me because we can have fun conversations where we can both learn things because his blind spots, we might be similar in, in our, our egotistical cockiness, but the, coming from a, a, a parent's conservative upbringing versus extremely parent liberal upbringing allows us, if we am loving each other, allows us to have these amazing conversations where we can argue and learn. I miss that guy so much. I haven't been able to see him in, in base. It feels like years. Um, Letter A, we are born with attributes that can both help us and hurt us depending on their application. Right. So um, nature versus nurture, right? Um, am I the way I am because of the way I was brought up or am I the way I am because I'm the way I am? Like I think about how my mom used to say I would um, jump out of the stroller and just start running into the street. I'm like two years old. Was I always this reckless big energy person. I, it seems like there is a lot to it where it's, it's like natural. Some of the stuff, the way you are. And then there's, there's that conditioning that you get as well. You can crush someone like that. Like we, we put kids into a classroom when they're six years old and expect them to sit still and take notes. Like, like me, that probably was pretty hard for me here. I am, but, but it's beneficial because now I can sit and do work all the time, but I can't do it all day. I, I, I do work from like five to one and I take a break and I have a 30 minute lunch. Then I get into the gym and I put in the work. I got the gym comes up every week. And then I, um, but the key is then I go door knocking, which is not, not office work. That's face to face. That's the stuff I really like. And the transactions and the showing properties and, and talking to people about the strategy of how to list. That's not typing in Excel and planning things. That's, that's more of this practical um, jump out of the stroller and act stuff. So yeah, if you, if you understand that people are all different and you accept it and you, you try to figure out how to do what's best for everyone you meet, yeah, it is powerful. It's it's cool. I've gone from like criticizing this this book originally a little bit in the few first few episodes to like just giving personal anecdotes and enjoying enjoying the all the points because they are really great. Um, so now we're on four point two. Meaningful work and meaningful relationships aren't just nice things we choose for ourselves. They are genetically programmed into us. And then I have a note underneath: social cooperation is integ integral to effective work. Um, yeah, so that, that's definitely true. And that's what I keep talking about. And the cool thing about someone like John, John Spizzy is we are so different, but we cultivated this, this meaningful relationship and have been allowed uh, that's allows us to grow and change and, and learn new things. Um, they, like I said, we don't, okay, let me read it again. Meaningful work and meaningful relationships aren't just nice things we choose for ourselves. They are genetically programmed into us. So not necessarily the John Spizzy answer, but being close with your parents, having friends that you're very close with. Humans are social creatures, and that's one of the biggest problems with this um, this virus. And one of the reasons why I'm getting by so much better than most people is because I'm still door knocking. Now I had a lady. Um, I knocked on her door. I don't think she even opened it. And I was like, blah blah blah. And she was like, man, man. And I like just kept going with the script, anyways. And then she just puts her real estate card up against the window. Is like, I'm a realtor. I'm like, oh great. I'm like, I love meeting realtors. So I'm like, any advice for a new guy? And her advice was, uh, you can't go door knocking. 
And I was like, and she's saying, keep in mind, she's behind the glass. She won't even open the door to talk to me. And she's like, you can't go door knocking. And I'm like, oh, that that's funny. Literally, I was like, that's, that's, that's really weird because I have a license from the city of Boulder to go door to door. And then she was just like, oh. And I was like, have a nice day. <laughs> so that kind of shit. Yeah, again, that, that kind of shit happens. But um, how, what does this relate? Um, genetically programmed into, I, I don't know. How, I don't know how I got on, on that. But um, um, their gene- social interaction, right, right. The, the virus and do- going door to door. Social interaction is super, super important. And it is programmed into us. And you need to uh, talk to people to, to be happy. And people who are isolated. And let, even if you're an introvert, still some sort of social interaction. Your mother, your father, your sister, your girlfriend, whatever. People need to. Um, flesh things out with speech and that's one of the things I do with these videos and I do with the conversations I have with my friends as well it's it it, it will uh, facilitate success is you can't do it on your own and I struggle with egoism and stuff but um yeah 4.3 understand the great brain battles and how to control them and get what you want right so we're talking about kind of influencing people and understanding that they're wired differently so if you know that someone um, responds well to like direct, like this is what you should do. And then they'll listen to you and then they're wired differently than someone like me who it's like, I'm, if someone says, this is what you should do. I'm extremely very skeptical because I don't like absolute statements and I don't like people telling me what to do. Whereas the other, the other person, for example, my client who really wants guidance from an expert will, will enjoy me telling them this is what you should do. But again, I, I still don't like absolute statements. So I'll, I will avoid saying stuff like that typically. But, um, there's a lot of there's a lot of value. Is he calls it brain battles because one brain is wired one way, one is the other, and we're trying to like interconnect and influence each other to get the best outcomes. And that's what this um, idea meritocracy is about: is having all sorts of different types of of wise minds who are all open minded, battling it out to find the best solution to the the problems that your company is trying to solve. Really good stuff, as always. Letter A: Realize that the conscious mind is in a battle with the subconscious mind. All right, we're getting to the deep stuff here that I'm not going to be an expert on, but I do think about. Um, right, conscious mind. I'm I consciously chose to put out to do this this um, this video, but there is the kind of unconscious where like I'm I'm shaking, you know, I'm moving a little bit while I'm saying this. The unconscious. I, I can't I can't shed much light on this. Uh, you should really read the book, as I always say. But um, studying the subconscious and and the conscious is very important. Like I consider my dreams like the subconscious. Or like how you feel. Like last week, my emotions were were down, so I wasn't. I, the videos actually turned out pretty good, but my my emotions were down, so I wasn't. Um, I wasn't really feeling great. But that was my subconscious that was like, "Hey, man, you're down today." But um, my conscious mind made me power through and do the videos anyways, and I still put out the content I wanted to, but I didn't feel as good about it while I was doing it. Now, here's here's a note. Exam underneath it. Oh, I have two notes. Open open streams of communication between conscious and Open the stream of communication between conscious and unconscious mind. Acknowledge that there is this subconscious underneath you that's kind of pulling a couple strings, but you want you want your logic mind to be in, in the driver's seat, and that's how you be succeed is by understanding that you do have this emotional subconscious part to you, but orchestrating your life so you can learn to control it. For example, not feeling well and not wanting to do something last week, but doing it anyways because logic overpowers the conscious should be the ruler and some people live in their subconscious too much and they don't even realize it. Um, the other, the other example uh, the other note was examine subconscious thoughts before acting on them. Right, right. So you have a feeling for something now, again, a good leader, you know, goes with their gut. Like when I wanted to go to Europe and the, I had the idea, it comes from my subconscious. A lot of my creative energy comes from my subconscious, but then you, you think about the results of, of your choices. The logic is what I, I, I feel like I want to do this, but what happens if I do? It's a great question and you, you push it through and you push it through and if you keep feeling better and better and better, your, your emotion keeps telling you, yeah, this is a good idea, it's a good idea. Your logic's telling you, yeah, it's probably a good idea, it's probably a good idea. Um, this is most, you know, 20% chance this will happen, 10% chance this will happen, 80% chance this will happen. That was like 110%, but whatever. Um, yeah, good stuff, right? Letter B. Know that the mo- know that the, the most constant struggle is between feeling and thinking. All right, I think we just kind of covered that pretty much. Um, you 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 will your feelings will change, and if you're doing something right, you'll feel more and more. In my opinion, you'll feel more and more positive energy a lot. If you're doing something wrong, you'll be uh, you'll be upset upset more and more often. So we just talked about that a bit. Um, I'll I'll read it again. Know that the most that the most constant struggle is between feeling and thinking. And, and what I and what Ray would it suggest is to make sure that the thinking is what's controlling your actions because that's what's going to lead you to success. Now, gut going with your gut is good, but there's there's a mix of that subconscious and, and, con, and conscious um, 
mind when it comes to like gut feelings. If you get a bad feeling about someone, you're getting like bad energy from them. You can think logically about why that's happening as well. But sometimes, you know, you can lead whatever, whatever, constant struggle. Letter C, reconcile your feeling and thinking. All right. So this is all the same stuff. Um, you're feeling, how do you feel about someone? How do you think? And then sometimes like you get a bad feeling about someone, but you're not, you're not thinking about like who they are. Like maybe they're, they, they've had a really, like, for example, like the, the torturing the, the prisoners, which I'm so against and I'm so against, you know, the death penalty and torturing people because they're, these are like, you, oftentimes these serial killers are, are mentally ill. Now, most of you probably don't feel bad for them, but I just <sighs> reconcile your feeling and thinking. Um, don't just, don't just make choices on anger or volition or, or, um, a desire for revenge because it's just not logically going to bring you long-term happiness and success. It's like knowing I, I gave justice to that guy. Some people get a kick off that, but I think you'll, you'll get so much more happiness and fulfillment from doing good things for good people rather than doing bad things to bad people. It just doesn't compute in my brain. I just don't like that. So reconcile your feeling and thinking. Just really always think about that. We've, we've talked about it a bit. Again, I'm not an expert on subconscious and conscious. You should study Freud. And then some of his theories have been debunked as well. So it's really, um, Think about what you dream about. I think that's very, very helpful because that, that's like a, a direct link between your conscious and subconscious is your subconscious um, is when you're dreaming and then you wake up and you remember your dreams and you can logically think through them. I think that's a good starting point. But I would really pursue this, this subconscious and, and conscious um, mind. I think it's 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 like it's like scary shit. It's like that's like um, existentialism. And it's like, are we alive when you wake up every day? Are you the same person as you were yesterday? Or are you in a new universe and all this stuff? We can get super deep and philosophical on that. What I'll say is I'm not an expert again, and just research um, conscious and subconscious mind and really get a, a firm understanding of it, which obviously I need to do as well. So I'll remember that when I watch this later. Future Ethan, how you doing? Hope you're well. You should be studying subconscious and conscious mind because you haven't gotten a good grip on it yet, obviously. And maybe next year you will because you're going to, I'm saying, I'm saying it, you're going to do it right now. All right. Ba-da-ba-ba-da-ba. McDonald's. Um, choose your habit well. And then underneath that, I said habits are very powerful. So choose your habits well. Bam, this is it right here. This is the most important thing from this video, choosing your habits well, because you use your, this is what he talks about, and we'll, we'll talk about this um, in the next week. Next week's gonna be really good, uh, three most harmful habits. This, this is a really good part of the book for um, really like achieving success no matter what venture you're in. Um, you're, you logically create your habits, and then the habits program your subconscious so me waking up every day and saying let's get it motherfucker washing my face blah 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 doing all that stuff and then getting straight into work i'm now subconsciously so on my inner level i am a hard worker who's dedicated to being successful this is it all comes from habits and when you guys say i could never wake up at 4 a.m i could never um not drink coffee i could never all these things it's a little more complicated with the physical addiction but i could never do something you're, you're allowing your conscious mind to tell you you can't do something. But if you just do it, what it takes, I think, 29 days to build, to build a habit, your habits are who you are. Going to the gym, I could never go to the gym five times a week like me. Yes, you could. You just do it. You just do it. It's a habit. And once you do it enough, it becomes who you are and it programs your subconscious. So now if I miss the gym, I feel like shit. So I don't like feeling like shit logically. So I go to the gym. It's all interconnected. It's all part of this one thing. And this is, I didn't do a good job of explaining it as I say sometimes, but you know, choose your habits well, because your habits are who you are and it allows you to, to really create who you are using your logic, creating your habits. And once you do your habits for a few months, like now I'm getting up at four every day, it is now subconscious. It's now I don't have to think about it. I just do it because it's who I am. Principles, episode 14. And we are going to be getting to how to win friends and influence people pretty soon, it looks like. Within, a, you know, maybe a couple months, we'll be getting on to how to win friends and influence people. Influence people. Hope you're all staying well, staying positive, staying frosty. 2012, love you all. It is the birth of Climate Change Realty, the most innovative real estate sales company in the world. Next year is going to be so much fun, just like this year was. Ah. All right, y'all take it easy. Peace out, dog.